ask yourself a question, why some people are really good at what they do and reach consistently great results in comparison to the rest of specialists in their area? Well, I've been absolutely fascinated by this question and spent a lot of time researching it. And what I realized is this, true specialists with special skills and deep knowledge work out the structures, the systems of their trades, and then apply the structures and systems on a consistent basis. This allows them to bring consistently amazing results over and over again. Hello, my dearest friends. My name is Svetlana Shlapak, and I'm a senior immigration solicitor based in London, UK. And I'm also the creator of this free UKVisaSuccess.com channel. I won my first immigration case at the tribunal back in 2003, and this gives me over 15 years of experience in UK immigration field. I've created another special video series for you called Deconstructing Immigration Rules, where I've deconstructed over 30 immigration categories for you. I've created this video series with only one aim, to help you understand the structure of immigration rules, because knowing the structure always helps achieve astonishing results. And for those of you who want to see how to apply this structure in practice, you can also check my other video series where I show you how to do exactly that. It is called ukvisasuccess.com frequently asked questions. Okay, uh, let us deconstruct your next immigration category. And yes, my friends, immigration law is a very, very deep area of law. I can only take so much of your time during each video. And as much as I love to, I have to be very succinct and choose the most important parts to explain to you during these videos. If after watching these videos, you decide that you would like to know more, please visit ukvisasuccess.com more. As at this page, I've provided you with the links to great free in-depth material, which will help you on your way to success with your immigration matter. In today's video, I am going to talk to you about the immigration rules you need to satisfy in order to enter the UK as a visitor. First of all, I'm going to explain the difference between visa nationals and non-visa nationals. Uh, then I'm going to concentrate on three key elements of the application, on suitability and eligibility requirements, and also on the procedure uh, that you need to follow in order to succeed with the application. And also, finally, I'm going to explain to you um, the uh, what will be the duration of your uh, leave if the application is successful and what immigration conditions will be imposed on your stay uh, if you enter the UK as a visitor. So why is it so important uh, for you to establish whether or not you are a visa national or non-visa national before applying for visitor's visa? Quite simply, if you're on a non-visa national list, it means that if you in have an intention of traveling to the UK for less than six months and you have no intention of marrying here in the UK, then you do not need to apply for visa before traveling to the UK. If you are uh, on a visitor's list, on visa national list, then you need to make an application, um, uh, it's called, uh, in legal terms, it's called entry clearance application before traveling to the UK. In other words, you need to get a prior permission before traveling to the UK. If you're a visa national, chances are you already know uh, that you are, but if you're not sure and you, you want to double check, uh, here is a very quick way of doing so. So you need to go to Google and you need to type um, Appendix V. Appendix V, and then you, uh, these are the rules uh, you need to know about uh, for, for visitors, and then you find Visa Nationals list, which is uh, uh, under Appendix 2, so you open the list, and here you find the list of all the countries um, uh, which are on the Visa National list. Uh, please make sure you do this, um, because at the time of the recording, these are the countries which are on the Visa National list, but they do update this on a regular basis. So please make sure that you double check if your country is on this list, because if this country is on the list, it means that you need to make uh, an application to enter the UK uh, as a visitor. But if uh, this country is not on the list, uh, then this means you don't need to uh, make an application to in order to travel uh, to the UK as a visitor. 
If you're on a visa national list, it means that you need to make a prior entry clearance application before traveling to the UK. And in order for you to succeed in this application, you need to concentrate on three key elements of the application. You need to make sure that you submit enough uh, evidence to prove that you meet the suitability requirements and then that you meet the eligibility requirements and that you follow the correct procedure. Let me explain what I mean by that. So when the decision maker, when the entry clearance officer starts considering the application, the first step for them is to make sure that you uh, meet all the suitability requirements. In other words, that you are a suitable person to enter the UK. And there are a number of elements to that. First of all, uh, they check if you uh, were either excluded or deported uh, from uh, the UK. And also they check if you have any criminal convictions. And in order for you to prove uh, that you don't, you you just simply obtain a, a criminal record uh, from the local police. Uh, it is available from the majority of countries, so it will be the easiest way and it will expedite the consideration of your application as well. And also, if you've traveled to the UK before, they want to make sure that your application was not refused uh, before and that you return within the time limit uh, they've given you and also that uh, you, you have not deceived uh, the Home Office in the past and that uh, they do not exclude you for medical reasons, that you are fit enough and also that there are no debts to NHS in excess of 500 pounds and also that if you've been to the UK before and there are some litigation costs outstanding to the Home Office that you've repaid um, those as well. You have to understand that if you failed uh, to provide uh, the necessary information in support of your application or you fail to attend the interview, the application will be uh, automatically refused on suitability grounds. Uh, having said that, if there was a refusal before, it doesn't mean that you cannot reapply again as long as you make sure that you explain why there was a change of circumstances and why the application um, has to be allowed this time. You just have to explain this to the decision maker in your application. Once you've taken the steps to prove that you meet all the suitability requirements, you move uh, to the next element of the application, uh, to the next key element of the application. Uh, you need to prove that you meet all the eligibility requirements. Eligibility requirements is all about proving to the decision maker that you have a genuine intention to visit the, the, the UK. And here's how you can do it. First of all, you need to inform the decision makers to when you intend to leave the UK. And I would like to warn you guys here that if <clears throat> you, uh, for example, state in your application form that you want to visit the UK only for two weeks, and then after being granted a visa for six months, you decide to stay here for one month, uh, then um, uh, you have to be really careful in, in these circumstances because at a later point, if you apply for your visitor's visa again, the decision maker may actually double check as to what you stated in your application form and how long you actually stayed uh, in the UK. And therefore, I strongly suggest that if you stated that you want to remain in the UK for two weeks, I strongly suggest that you uh, remain here exactly for two weeks and then you return back to your country of origin and then you can return uh, for as long as your visa is valid here and you can stay here for as long as you want to. As long as you remain in the UK uh, on your first trip, um, exactly the length of time you stated in your application form. Uh, the next key element is to make sure that you uh, prove to the decision maker that you will not live in the UK for extended periods through fre frequent or successive visits. Normally, this applies to relatives of someone who lives here in the UK. Uh, quite often, uh, this is uh, this relates to parents of uh, someone who naturalized here as British citizens. Uh, what happens? Because it's really difficult for someone to obtain a visa as a dependent relative, and what they do instead, they apply for visitors visa and they uh, come and live here uh, in the UK together with their children. And uh, this is really dangerous thing to do because the immigration officer, you know, when you travel to the UK, they can double check um, how long you've been living in the UK and how long you've been living in your country of origin. And if the amount of time you've lived here in the UK is longer than the amount of time you spent in your country of origin, the decision maker may doubt your genuine intention to enter the UK as a visitor because they will, they may say that you 
uh, yeah, actually uh, intend to make uh, the UK your main home and therefore please make sure that you strike a healthy balance between your visits to the UK and your time which you spend in your country of origin if you are a relative of someone who is a British citizen and also you need to prove uh, that you are generally seeking uh, entry for the purposes permitted uh, by the visitors route and you have no intention uh, to be involved in prohibitive activities normally you are not allowed to work here in the UK or study and most importantly that you have enough funds to cover your uh, short stay here in the UK and if you do have no intention of uh, uh, sponsoring your uh, own visit to the UK and if you have someone who wants to uh, to, enter, uh, to, to sponsor your uh, trip to the UK uh, then you need to proceed with proving uh, the next element of the eligibility requirement you need to prove that um, uh, you um, will be uh, maintained and accommodated by the third party so the sponsor, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the person who will be paying for your application will be known as the sponsor in the application. And the first thing you need to do is you need to show to the decision maker what uh, relationship you have with the sponsor. You need to prove that you are, have genuine either professional or personal relationship with that person. And also that uh, that person has a right to remain in the UK and that they are financially credible, that they have enough funds to uh, support you to maintain and accommodate you that they have somewhere to live for you for you to, uh, to live and uh, that they have enough funds normally this is done by providing uh, statements um, uh, I would probably want to see statements for the past six months and not only that it is really important for them to write a letter to say that they're willing to support you financially as well because it's not enough to show that they have enough funds they also have to show that uh, they have an intention of supporting you financially and provide you with accommodation so once uh, this is proven you are ready to move to the next uh, key element of the application you are ready to uh, submit the application you need to make sure that you are following the correct procedure uh, when you're doing so and the correct procedure is quite simple first of all you need to complete uh, the online form and here is how you can find it so you go to uh, this page you go to uh, visas-immigration.service.gov.uk forward slash visa type and uh, you follow the procedure here and you click uh, this button the green button start now here once you've done that then you will be um, requested to pay the fee and then you will be asked to choose the date uh, on which you will be uh, able to uh, submit the documents to the supporting documents and as well as provide your biometrics and then you will be requested to provide your uh, up-to-date passport and also all the supporting uh, documents so if you've taken steps to prove that you meet the suitability the eligibility requirements and you follow the correct procedure chances are your um, application for to enter the uk as a visitor uh, will be successful and uh, the length of your visa will depend on the type if you've applied uh, as a standard visitor then you're most likely to be granted visa for six months if you applied for private medical treatment then it's up to 11 months if you applied as an ac academic visitor then it's uh, up to one year and uh, this is only for chinese nationals approved the destination status agreement for up to 30 days if you can apply it here to uh, come here as a, um, under the marriage or civil partnership visa then it will be up to six months uh, if you applied as a permitted uh, paid engagement visitor then it will be up to five, one month and if you applied to enter the UK as a transit visitor then it will be up to 48 hours and if your application is successful there will be certain conditions imposed on your stay in the UK uh, th th you, th there will be no recourse to public funds condition uh, when you are not allowed to claim any benefits secondly you will not be allowed to study in the UK and thirdly you will not be allowed to work 
and this is it my friends this is all we wanted to discuss in today's video and as i mentioned before just to summarize uh, today's video you need to make sure that you are on a visa national list uh, before making an application and then you need to take effective steps uh, to prove to the decision maker that you meet all the suitability requirements all the eligibility requirements and you follow the correct procedure when making the application i wish you best of luck with the application and i'll see you soon and once again, just to remind you that at ukvisasuccess.com forward slash more, I've provided you with a number of links to free resources which I've created to help you understand the UK immigration law better. Have a great day, everyone.